For those who were expecting to see Dave Hill here, I am not Dave Hill. My name is Raj Gupta. Um, Dave Hill was originally scheduled to give this presentation, but due to some change in plans, he's unable to be here today. Um, uh, a few words about myself. So I come from the firm Finnegan Henderson in Washington, D.C. Uh, we are a IP-only firm, but we do all aspects of intellectual property. The topic for today's presentation is um, smartphone litigation in the U.S., and, and I have been involved in this field, um, along with another one of my partners here, Anand Sharma, who's in the front. Uh, we, together, we've both been involved in smartphone litigation for over the last five years. So we thought we would bring our own perspective into, into this field, which is really very hot. It has gotten a lot of publicity. Uh, people are sort of may not know all the details about all the litigations, but they are certainly aware that there are big patent wars going on over the smartphone technology. And that's <laughs> what I'll talk about today. Now, it works. Um, the smartphone arena, I mean, it has made tremendous progress in the last few years. Um, I mean, I think I can safely say that every person in this room probably has a smartphone. Um, you know, the manufacturer may be different, the operating system may be different, but pretty sure that in any business environment today, everybody is connected in some way through a smartphone. And, and and it's in part, it is this popularity, this advancement in technology that has also sort of made this a very lucrative field because this is now a business opportunity that is huge. And, and the companies that are the market leaders are, are leveraging their intellectual property to try and gain a better market share. And, and it is almost a given that, that the litigation is almost a cost of doing business in this, in this field. Um, and it is, to a certain extent, almost unavoidable. Um, so one always thinks about, well, who is responsible for you know, having all of these smartphone wars? Um, some people think it's, it's the companies. They, they, some people, like, like Apple and Steve Jobs, he felt very passionate about protecting Apple's technology. And, and it, it may be safe to say he had a pretty strong dislike towards the, the Android system and, and Google, and, and he felt that they were sort of ripping off Apple's technology, and, and he was determined to, to you know, put all the resources that Apple had be, you know, in trying to get rid of Android. And, and that's, that's what he believed in. So this was sort of almost like a matter of principle. He believed in his technology, and he did, did not want somebody else to encroach in that, in that space. Um, others feel that, that perhaps it's the patent office's fault, that the, the patent office is granting way too many patents. Not all of them are perhaps of the quality that they should be. So there are lots of weak patents out there that may encourage more litigation because now you, they have claims that are perhaps broad enough that, you know, that they can be asserted against a number of different technologies and, and so forth. And the, and the reason perhaps the, there are these weak patents being granted is because of lack of resources on the, on the patent office's side. But, but you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the patent office is not solely responsible for it for um, having these um, smartphone wars. The, the, the number of um, infringement suits or patent suits that have been in this area, it's, they have been growing tremendous, at a tremendous pace, uh, about 25% per year since 2006. That's, that's a very rapid increase in the last six years. Um, another reason why smartphones are sort of, you know, the, the target of so many patent suits is the, is the amount of technology that is, that is all crammed into a small device like this. Um, it's, 
it's not just a communication device. It doesn't have just technology associated with how do you communicate signals between your smartphone and a base station. There are a host of other technologies, such as the, the display, such as how to make the processors more efficient, to, to make the battery life last longer, the software that runs on these um, smartphones. So overall, it is estimated that there are probably about 250,000 patents worth of inventions in one device. And that's, that's one of the reasons that you can now think, like, why this is, you know, a, an easy target, why this is a space where, it, where there are so many litigations going on. The, it's, it's definitely a costly proposition having these, um, these wars between the smartphone manufacturers. It's estimated that about 15 to 20 billion dollars has been spent in trying to acquire patents, buying and selling patents, so that they can have a portfolio that they can assert against their competitors um, in order to maintain or grow their market share. Um, as far as the legal bills are concerned, I think the estimate says it's about 500 million. Um, and that's, that's fairly significant. Um, and that's, it has kept a lot of law firms um, mostly larger law firms in, in the IP space, very busy for the, for the past few years, um, which is not all bad. Uh, the, this, the, the, the major players in this market, I mean, the, the, the market share has gone up and down over the years between these players, but these are, one can safely say these are probably the, the, the six... Uh, or five, five uh, top players as far as the litigations are concerned. You obviously have Apple. Their, their, their market share has probably grown the most in the last five years. Uh, you have HTC. Um, this is uh, one of the better known Android phone manufacturers and um, their market share has, has uh, shot up to about 24% per, uh, percent. and this is uh, last year's data. Uh, which is ahead of Samsung and Apple and, and uh, RIM uh, as well. RIM, RIM has been one company that actually has lost significant market share in the last few years. Uh, Samsung, again, another company that has uh, really taken a big chunk of the market share based on their Android uh, phones. Uh, Motorola, uh, they've had their ups and downs. Um, I think the last... Uh, the last bit was that they, their mobility division, which is the one that handled all the cellular communications, that was acquired by Google. So, so now they're, they're part of uh, Google, and that was a um, transaction that was worth $12.5 billion. And, and one of the factors for why Google really wanted to acquire uh, Motorola Mobility was because of the strength of their uh, patent portfolio. Uh, Nokia, that's, um, um, they have had their struggles as well. Um, they recently announced um, in the last couple of years that they're switching over from Symbian to the Windows system. Um, it still remains to be seen with the Windows system. Can they gain back some of that market share that they have lost over the, over the years? Uh, so I'm just going to run through a few of the the important uh, patent wars that have gone on between these competitors. And I think some of the themes you'll start to see come out as we go through some of these cases, and the themes being that it, most of the time it'll start with one company shooting off an arrow from their quiver, and, you know, and, and then very soon they get you know, a volley of uh, lawsuits back. Um, there's patents being asserted from both sides. Um, multiple forums. They have a global strategy for uh, asserting these patents. It's not just concentrated in the U.S. They, they have multiple law firms involved. That there are challenges associated with how do you keep a strategy of, of enforcing your patents and, and trying to reach some kind of a settlement that is favorable to you. Um, but ultimately, um, the parties settle. 
Um, I think that is not all of them have settled, but but ultimately, as as time goes on, and there's you know there there has to be some kind of resolution at the end, um, and it most of the time will end in some kind of a cross licensing deal. So as far as Nokia and Apple is concerned, Nokia started this by suing Apple in in the District of Delaware, and and they claimed the infringement for ten essential patents. And I want to just take a moment here to talk a little bit about essential patents because this, this comes up very often in, in uh, smartphones. And because the, the communication protocol on how a handset, a smartphone, interacts with the base station is based on a standardized protocol. So you have, one can have patents that read on exactly that protocol that everybody else who is complying with that standard has to has to adopt, and therefore, that makes that patent an essential patent. So, if you are practicing the standard, then you are infringing. That's generally the way it is. The lawsuit is brought forth. But having an essential patent and being a member of one of these standardization bodies also triggers some obligations on the patent holders, and this is what's called a friend obligation. So they have an obligation to license that patent on fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory terms. And that's, that's a whole different topic in and of itself, um, but I just wanted to give a flavor for why these essential patents come up with smartphones so often. And sure enough, um, once Nokia sued Apple, Apple countered with its own set of patents, and they both filed um, uh, they both started infringement suits at the U U.S. Uh, International Trade Commission. Now, this is another specialized administrative agency in the U.S. which has jurisdiction over goods that may be infringing a, a, a U.S. patent and are being imported into the U.S. So here they have the, the, the authority to, at the customs to stop the, the, the importation of goods that are infringing. And because... The smartphones, they are all made outside the United States. Um, they, they are a perfect article that could be subject to the jurisdiction of the International Trade Commission. Um, so here, ultimately, uh, there was a settlement between Nokia and Apple. Um, Apple uh, Nokia has lost a significant um, share of their worldwide market, going from over 50% in 2007 to now barely 8% in, in 2012. That's a, that's a very significant decline. Apple, on the other hand, has flourished in this time period. Their market share has, has gone up from 5.2% in that time frame to 24.2, almost a five-fold increase in their market share. Uh, there have been, now with the rise of Apple, there have been a whole different set of litigations against Apple by the other manufacturers trying to gain back some of that market share that they have lost to Apple. And those include HTC, Motorola, and Samsung. Um, Motorola, um, they filed, um, they had their own battle with Apple. They filed three separate suits. Um, they also filed a suit in the ITC, Apple, as expected, countersuit, um, both in Illinois and in the International Trade Commission. Uh, Ultimately, here, there was no infringement of the Motorola essential claims. And what's interesting here is uh, Judge Posner in Illinois actually threw out this case because he, he told both parties that he would set what a reasonable royalty would be and they would have to accept it. And neither one of them was willing to do that. And so he threw the case out. And now they have both appealed to the higher court in, in the U.S., which is the Federal Circuit, and that is still pending there. Uh, next big um, war is between Apple and Samsung. So this, this is perhaps the, one of the bigger um, patent wars that's going on um, between the smartphone manufacturers, and there are about 20 cases total um, worldwide that are pending between these two companies. And it started with Apple suing Samsung in the Northern District of California. Uh, Apple asked for damages of, you know, $2.5 billion. Uh, this is, you know, uh, Samsung countersued with their essential patents. 
this case has gotten a lot of publicity recently because there was a, a, a jury verdict where they recommended a damages total of about a billion dollars. Um, there were other moves by, made by Apple in order to have a, a preliminary injunction. Uh, the, this motion ultimately was not successful. The court denied Apple's motion, and then Apple appealed to the federal circuit. The federal circuit remanded back to the district court. The district court had um, another um, – the district court took Apple's request, but um, they, they imposed a temporary ban on, on one product of, of um, Samsung, but not, not others. And they appealed to the federal circuit, and that's going on as well. The last set of cases I want to talk a little bit about is the Apple HTC cases, and this is where our firm has been involved, and we have considerable um, experience over the years. And this is, again, one of these cases where there have been so many suits back and forth, especially concentrated at the International Trade Commission. Um, and the end result here was that they actually reached a settlement not too long ago. Um, where both parties resolved all their disputes worldwide and, and, and this case has been, has been settled. So I think what is the takeaway from here is, as you can see, there, in the International Trade Commission, which is a perfect uh, model and a perfect forum for such litigation, this has been very active. These are all cases that are pending or have completed at, recently at the United uh, States International Trade Commission. So what the as a conclusion, what the future holds, I think um, in this area we can expect to see uh, continued litigation, uh, these big companies fighting it out in a, in a very competitive market, trying to maintain their, their or grow their market share. Thank you.